Welcome to the LaCrescent Award Sunday Supplement for February 21st. Before we begin our program today, we have a few announcements. First, we'd like to make sure everyone is aware that this evening at 6.30 p.m. will be the Bishop's Youth Fireside. That will be in the back parking lot of the church. Please remember to wear a mask and bring your own chair. That will be every third Sunday going forward, 6.30 p.m., Bishop's Youth Firesides. Also, we want to make sure the schedule, our monthly schedule going forward, is, is clear to everyone. It is, of course, subject to change, but for now the plan is to have the first Sunday be a testimony meeting via Zoom, as we did this month, and that will be at 11 o'clock a.m. The second Sunday will be in person in the back parking lot of the church, also at 11 a.m. That meeting will also be live streamed on Zoom, so if you do not feel comfortable attending the in-person meeting, you are able to watch that live stream sacrament meeting at 11 a.m. on the second Sunday. The third Sunday will be a supplement like this one posted on the Ward YouTube page and other social media. And then the fourth Sunday will be back in person in the building, the back parking lot again, 11 o'clock a.m., also again live streamed via Zoom. And also we want to make sure everyone's aware that the sister missionaries are still not allowed to be inside your homes, but they can stop by to share a short message with you from the front porch or outside. Um, they also would love to be fed. We're doing a good job of feeding them, but we want to make sure we keep doing a good job. The online dinner calendar uh, is, is easy to sign up for. Jeff Young has sent the link before. We will ensure it is sent again. Please sign up to have the missionaries over. You can deliver a meal as they deliver a message. Uh, we had them over this past week. They sat on the front porch. We had some put some chairs up there. They sat on the front porch, taught us a wonderful lesson about feeding the Savior's sheep. Uh, it was great to have that missionary spirit in our home. The sisters have a wonderful, um, unique testimony and message to bring. So please uh, sign up to have them over. It is uh, definitely worth your time. And those are all the announcements we have. So we'll move on to our program now. We'll first hear from Sister Nicole Rowley, and she will be followed by Brother Jorge Encinas, a member of our High Council. We'd like to thank both Sister Rowley and Brother Encinas for preparing these messages for us and hope that you enjoy them and have a wonderful Sabbath. Everyone knows that we all go through trials. It's no secret. Uh, even the person who seems like they have their whole life together is struggling in one way or another. Um, now I could sit here and pretend like I know how to solve each and every one of my problems, but I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I feel like most of the time we're also focused on the end and how everything is gonna play out. Um, and believe me, I'm just as scared of the future as anyone else. <laughs> uh, but you know, over the past year, I've been working on uh, how to continue going on in, with my life during all my struggles. Um, and you know, I just feel that if we're able to maintain any sort of happiness or normalcy, even in the worst of times, we're able to really take advantage of the present um, instead of hoping for a better future. And you know, one of the best ways to do this is to find peace throughout your trials. Um, even the littlest things can make a difference. Uh, John 14, 27 states, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Um, Christ can be a source of peace for many people. Uh, they can find that opening their scriptures or getting down on their knees to pray is what brings them the most serenity. Um, and you know, this is a great way to bring tranquility into one's life. Um, but you know, Christ can also bring peace through other aspects that aren't directly related to the gospel. Uh, for example, I find my peace through art, any kind of art really. Um, if I'm feeling overwhelmed, I'll just put on like my favorite music to calm me down. Um, and you know, it just brings me comfort. Uh, if that doesn't work, I'll start painting. Um, for me, painting can just be so soothing and stress relieving, even though I'm not the best at it. Um, but you know, something about the like repeated strokes of the brush and the blending of the colors can almost always bring me peace. Um, if all else fails, I turn to my loved ones. Uh, I can always count on my parents or my sister if I need advice or just a shoulder to cry on. And of course, there's my friends who are always there to cheer me up even when I don't want them to. <laughs> um, and sometimes the best way to bring about peace is looking outside of yourself and reaching out to others. And you know, it may seem counterintuitive at first to focus on others when you're feeling overwhelmed, but I promise it's an amazing way to at least distract yourself 
and help the ones around you who may also need peace in their lives. Uh, one of my favorite hymns is Hymn 129, Where Can I Turn for Peace? Uh, and some of my fear favorite lyrics are, Where is my solace when with a wounded heart, anger, or malice? Uh, who, who can understand? He, only one. And the entire third verse, uh, He answers privately, reaches my reaching, in my Gethsemane, Savior and friend. Gentle the peace he finds for my beseeching. Constant he is in kind, love without end. And you know, this whole song just brings me so much comfort because it just reassures me that even when I feel like nobody's there for me, I know that Christ will be. Uh, he'll love and accept us for all that we are, the good and the bad, faults and all. Um, instead of ignoring us when we're feeling rejected, he reaches out and helps us along the way. Um, the line, constant he is in kind, love without end, is actually my favorite line. Um, because the song ends by telling us that Christ could never stop loving one of his children. And, you know, tying it back to peace. I think the best form of peace is Christ's light and love. Um, you know, the famous scripture, Moroni 7.12, reminds us that where all things which are good cometh from God. And, you know, just it's a good reminder that anything that sparks happiness or anything bringing forth some sort of peace even in the darkest of times, it all stems from our Heavenly Father and from the love that he has for us. Um, and I just wanted to close saying, overall, the best thing one can do during their trials is to be able to find that peace and comfort, whether it comes through Christ or not. Say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, good morning, La Crescent uh, uh, Ward. Um, it's, uh, it's an honor to uh, be able to uh, share a message with you today. Uh, Sandy, uh, my name is Jorge Encinas, and I am a state high counselor. Uh, this short message is about staying firm in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So to start, um, I want to uh, share with you the uh, history or the story of the origin of the uh, chocolate chip cookies. Back in 1930, uh, Ruth Wakefield and her husband, uh, owned a small inn um, on Route 18 in, in, uh, in Massachusetts. And so she uh, baked cookies for her clients. Um, one day she ran out of uh, uh, baker's uh, chocolate and she saw a, um, a Nestle bar, uh, Nestle bar uh, chocolate bar, and she chopped it up into a small chunks and that's what she put in the dough for the cookies that she was making that day. To her surprise, um, after uh, setting up the oven to 350 degrees for um, uh, the time needed, the cookies, when, they, when the cookies came out, um, she observed that the, cho the chocolate chips had remained in their place. They had not melted all out into the dough. And um, it was uh, it, despite the heat of the oven. Um, and that was something new because the baker's chocolate would actually melt into the dough and we create a, kind of like a brownie type of cookie. So similarly uh, to the chocolate chips, uh, which did not melt and which uh, retain um, uh, their flavor, um, uh, my message today is about uh, how can we stay firm, how we can maintain uh, our testimony and how can we uh, maintain our covenants with our Heavenly Father and uh, stay intact, right? somehow intact uh, uh, when we have to face the adversary. Um, Hilleman has a very good advice on how to accomplish uh, this uh, task of staying firm. He says to his sons and my sons now remember, remember that it is upon the rock of our Redeemer, who is Christ, the Son of God, that ye must build your foundation. And when the devil shall send forth his mighty winds, yeah, his shafts in the whirlwind, yeah, when all his hail and his mighty storm shall beat upon you, it shall have no power over you to drag you down to the gulf of misery and endless woe. Because of the rock upon which ye are built, which is a sure foundation, a foundation, a foundation whereon 
if men build, they cannot fall. Um, going back a little bit to the chocolate uh, chips, uh, there are two main ingredients that keep the um, chocolate chips from melting. And one of them is uh, stabilizers. Uh, it's a compound that prevents the separation of the ingredients in the chocolate chip. Likewise, I believe we have uh, access to a spiritual stabilizers that are part of the gospel of Jesus Christ that will keep us stable, like the uh, chips of chocolate, uh, when we have to face uh, our uh, challenges and our trials. And we know that studying the scriptures, prayer, obedience to our covenants, and um, also uh, the uh, spiritual experiences that we seek or that we have a chance to go through will greatly uh, serve as stabilizers in our lives. Um, another ingredient that keeps the chocolate chips um, in, together is uh, a compound called emulsifier. So uh, the emulsifiers uh, keep the cocoa particles attached to the butter in the chocolate in the chocolate chips. Usually, um, a liquid or semi-liquid such as the butter and a solid such as the particles of cocoa would not stick, would not stick together. So um, I believe that we also have a spiritual emulsifier um, by excellence, which is the Holy Ghost. Um, the Holy Ghost um, can sharpen our um, our ears, our mind, uh, our it can it can soft, soften our hearts uh, to be more understanding of uh, the plan of salvation for ourselves and our uh, families and our friends when um, when we have to make uh, those very important decisions uh, in life, right? So, um, Elder Ross Ross Band. Uh, talks about or reminds us about in one of his talks about Paul who um, uh, Paul says that we as, as we seek the companionship of the Holy Ghost as we seek uh, to get to know our Redeemer we will become new creatures and with a heart and a soul in harmony with God's will um, and I I'm pretty sure that this is also another very good help that we have um, to withstand the pressure of the world and the pressure of the adversary. Um, President Nelson also says in one of his talks that in the future days uh, it will be impossible to survive spiritually without the guidance of the, the guide and the orientation and the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Um, now, the chocolate chips actually do go go through uh, a high heat uh, uh, degree, right? So they do actually melt a little bit. They do go through a little bit of a transformation. Uh, but at the end, when the chocolate chip cookies are pulled out, the chocolate chips reconstitute themselves back become more solid as when they were uh, before they went into the oven. So likewise, I believe that um, the enabling and redeeming power of the atonement uh, help us be whole again as we go through uh, uh, our experiences in life, as, uh, as we uh, try to do our best. Uh, we come out sometimes a little bit, um, a little bit short of what our goal should be. And it's thanks to the grace of Heavenly Father and the atonement of Jesus Christ that we're able to reno and renovate in our covenants and also um, through the atonement of Jesus Christ and, and the power of forgiveness, we're able to um, come back again and to be whole again. Um, President Monson um, talks about um, there to stand alone in one of his talks uh, some years back. And I like this quote that I want to share with you, which he says, there to be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, there to stand alone, 
dare to have a purpose firm, dare to make it known. Um, I want to finish this message by sharing my testimony that um, as, as we tune in to uh, the whispering of the Holy Ghost, as, as we try, as we are obedient to our covenants, uh, we little by little, we, we're going to be gaining a deeper and deeper conversion. And um, at the end, uh, we're going to be able to understand more and more uh, um, our Heavenly Father's uh, will and how we can better um, help others, uh, our friends or family, and uh, as well as staying firm uh, in the gospel of Jesus Christ and maintaining our testimonies and deepening our conversion conversion in, in the face of um, uh, the adversary, in the face of problems, in the face of challenges um, that we have day in and day out. And uh, when I say all this, um, in the name of Jesus Christ, um, amen. <laughs>